Hello. Welcome to the Film Obsessed Couple. I'm Shelly. And I'm Scott. And I almost forgot what I was going to say. It's been a minute since we've done this. Absolutely right out of the start. I'm like, who are we? What's my name? Well, I know that I'm Scott. That's good. And you've told me that you're Shelly before. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Oh, shit. What's your alter ego name? I was really drunk. I don't remember. And basically, Shelly, and she has, she doesn't do this very often, but we went on a float trip and she we both got pretty drunk and she came up with an alter ego name for herself. Yeah. God, I wish I could remember it at this point, but I oh well. I know. We kept saying it for the longest time, but it's it's been four years? <laughs> Something like It's been quite some time. It's been insane. I want to say like Lolita or Frit. Prince, I can't remember. It's not Lydia. No, that's our that's our joke name. Yeah, I think we've said that before on the podcast. Explained why, but mm-hmm. that's our joke name of people being jerks. Yeah, it's it's like a Karen, but worse. Yes, that's how yeah. I explain it. Huh. <sighs> well, anyway, I've got some exciting news. Yeah, um, what's up? I have been waiting for so long to say this to somebody besides you know close friends and and relatives, but I own my own craft store what maybe not own it but i have it wait yeah you never told me this (laughs) you said you've just only told close friends and relatives (laughs) you're my best friend so Uh, you know Um, yeah exciting yeah so it i have i have it open on etsy so that's probably why i don't own it is because etsy owns it technically but it's mine Mm -hmm. i'm claiming it i do macrame if you're not sure what macrame is, it's basically you t- take rope and you make knots and it's really pretty. Yeah, you do some crazy stuff with that. Yeah, and I'm starting out really small. I just have a couple of things out there. So if you're like, oh, is this it? No, no, just hold on to your butts because I have got so many ideas. It's yeah. insane. Sometimes I'm like, okay, how do I organize and get this out there? I have so many ideas. But I've got Mother's Day ideas coming up. I got Father's Day ideas coming up. And I've even got uh, Pride Month, which is coming up. Yes. I have some stuff coming out for that. And what would be the name of this place? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's Moon Knight Crafts. Like moon and then like night is in the night. Right. Not like medieval, but night is in the evening. Correct. Yes. And we'll have a link in our descriptions. And all you have to do is click on it and you can go right to the Etsy store. And if you favorite the store, then you'll get updates. And you can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, even though I don't have any videos, and then YouTube. Again, no videos yet, but hopefully soon. I just started back work this week. It's not been smooth, still having pain. So I'm going to have to deal with that for a little bit i'm gonna have to go to we're going to urgent care and stuff after after we get done yeah, recording getting you checked up <laughs> see what's going on so a lot of stuff happening yeah and you've been very inspiring and in just how you've been moving forward with this you you're you're very inspiring to me because you're like i think i'm gonna do this and then you do it like when you were like i'm gonna go back to school and get my coding degree you went back to school and you're getting close i am if math does not destroy me <laughs> Well, and then you're like, you know, I love doing this macrame and craft so much that I'm going to start my own business. And you did. And it's something I've wanted for over 20 years, at least. Yeah. It's just, it's never been very, like 20 years ago, the internet wasn't that big. And right. people buying off the internet, they're like, oh my gosh, no, they're going to steal my identity. And yeah, it just was, didn't happen. But now, I mean, you could be anything you want to be. Seriously, you just Google it, figure it out. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. But, you know, I think we're di- we're so different personalities in that because I have like these big dreams and stuff, but I'm like, well, that'll never work out. <laughs> but mm. you're like, I have an idea to do something. We're going to do it. And that's another reason why this podcast got going is because you were like, we should do a podcast. And because of your support and your help and your ideas, like we did it. Here we are. So you're very... I'm very thankful and very lucky to have you because you're a very motivated type person when I'm just like, I have this idea. No way could that possibly work. (laughs) Well, thank you. But you do a lot of work, too. You're just so damn smart. Oh, I'm like a behind the scenes guy, I guess. I'm not the idea man or the the guy who's going to get the ideas going. (laughs) You think of all the movies. Yeah, well. Give yourself some credit, man. Thank you. God damn. (laughs) 
But we are going to talk about a movie today. Yes, we are talking about a movie today. We're talking about... Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, that that was less than 30 seconds, and we are reviewing that <laughs> on the podcast. So, uh, no, it's I, we were doing that all... I was at least doing that, but it's shattered. We're doing a uh, movie last year? I can't remember, but called Shattered. Yeah, 2022. Yeah, as, as I've said, I was like... Hey, I've gone through and looked at what were maybe some of the movies that were not the best last year, and they're always kind of the fun fun ones to do. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> they're always the fun ones to do. There's more to talk about. Yeah, Rotten Tomatoes gave this 19%. That's a little too good, I think. I didn't care for this movie. Really? I think if they had a different lady. Lady. Yes. Yeah, we'll get to her, but she is... Probably the worst part of the movie. Mm. And they ask so much of her. She's like the main kind of driving she's, force of the movie. She's the villain, she basically. She is shattered. <laughs> she, she, she will shatter your ass. From what I read, I thought this was like a sexual thriller, kind of like um, Basic Instinct, you know, mm. where it's like tons of sex and it's like intrigue, you know, because that's basically what Basic Instinct is. But this this is more just like kind of a thriller movie. It, yeah, I did not jump once. Yeah, well, it's more like a, oh my gosh, some people are after him. Is he going to make it? You know, kind mm. of thriller instead of like... Like suspense. Yeah, thriller suspense. Um, there are some crazy, like, sex scenes, a couple of them in there, where you're like, whoa. Yeah. They were really doing that, it looks like. <laughs> yeah, they were. Probably not really having sex, but he's grabbing on her hooters. Well, I can't... That position that they were in... Yeah, she's like sitting on top of him. Oh, um, kind of. Like he's in a crouched position and she's, it's kind of hard to explain. It is very weird. He's like, he's sitting yeah, on his she, knee. He's like this. <laughs> she's doing a diagram. <laughs> and <then> she's like this. <laughs> she's making it with her hands. <laughs> and then he was like this. <clears throat> <laughs> I mean, how do you fake that? Well, I don't. you'd see his little dingling. Yeah, I don't think they were, there was anything inside, nothing but. Or big dingling. I don't know. I didn't I see know. any dingling. Yeah, but he was really grabbing on her on her boobers. Yeah. So uh, whenever I see those, it just kind of makes me laugh. I'm like, whoa, they were they were getting pretty close. It's crazy. With I, I wish I knew how they did that. Do you know how they do that? How do they make it look so real? I've heard things in the past of like something kind of like a sock for the men, oh, where it's like they a, gotta get hard, right? I don't know. You would think so, I guess. Is this but... too much? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, actors have talked about doing nude scenes before. I remember the big guy, Joe Manganiello, who was the wolf in True Blood. He's like naked a lot in that show. Mm. Not full frontal, but they're like, so you're pretty much naked. Like, how does that work? And he's like, they give you like a tiny little sock and it goes over your, your penis and that's it. <laughs> So, Is it a green sock? <laughs> so uh, they could do whatever they want. That I don't know. Yeah, erase it. <laughs> it's it's um, it's like the white lotus. They're like, okay, you get to pick out your penis that's going to be in the show. So pick out which one you want. I want the longest long there is. <laughs> yeah, the penises are shown in the white lotus in both seasons we watched, mm-hmm. and we did look it up because I was like, did that dude really show his dick? That's that's pretty <laughs> crazy. And they're like. They were fake. If he had that dick, he'd probably be like, yeah. I would love to show this dick off. I would love to. That's why I joined this project. I flipped through the script and it said, there is a shot of my penis. <laughs> I'm a method actor. I will get my balls swollen for this scene because that's they're like, he's like, check my balls out. They're swollen. <laughs> so the main character in this, his name's Cameron Monaghan. He's been in a bunch of stuff. He was in... Uh, Shameless. I almost said Shattered. I was like, he was in Shattered, the he TV was. show. He was. <laughs> Imagine that. He was in Shameless, the show. Um, I never followed Shameless past a certain season, I think. I remember liking it, but then I read that it went real downhill as it went on further and further. He's going to be in the new Star Wars game that's coming in the mail for me. Well, at least he'll make money on that. Yeah, he was in the first one, Jedi Fallen Order. Fallen mm. Order. And he's in this new one, Jedi Survivor, as Flagablaga. <laughs> no, I think it's Cal something. I recognized him, and I have no idea where. It's just like, oh, I've seen this guy somewhere. He's been in things before. He was in that um, Gotham TV show as like a Joker kind of guy, and people said he was really good in it. I remember reading, and they were like, wow, he's a great Joker kind of villain. He wasn't bad in this. 
I didn't think. There were some spots. I don't know. It, it's not really asking much of him. All he's doing is like, why are you doing this? He's like, he's like Batman. <laughs> why are you doing this? I would have given you everything. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> yeah. We had real sex on screen. But uh, yeah, he's the main dude in here. IMDB <clears throat> gave it five out of ten. I suppose so. Um, the main, oh, his name is Chris Decker. Oh yeah, kind of regular white man name, I guess. Um, and the main girl in this movie is Sky, no last name given, and she is played by Lily Krug. You want to know something interesting? Sure. Every time, like when I was younger and I played video games, you had to enter in a name. Mm-hmm. It was always Sky. Oh, cool. I just, I love that name. Not so much after this one, huh? No. Now I'm like, <laughs> I hate it, burn it, never using it again. And yes, yeah, she plays the main character. I I thought I recognized her from something, unless I just missed it on her IMDb, but no, I didn't see anything really that I've seen her in before. No. I must be getting her confused with one of the other standard blonde white ladies. <laughs> oh. Yeah, and she probably hasn't been in anything... After this? Real, before this. <laughs> And and won't be after this. Sorry, lady. No offense. And the crazy one here is we've got John Malkovich playing yeah. Ronald, <laughs> which is my legal name, but I hate it. So, but he doesn't. He's just like Ronald. He is a pervert hotel uh, apartment complex owner. Yeah, they even make fun of him, calling him Ronald McDonald. Yeah, well, at one point, talk about why I hate the name. People yeah. found out I go by my middle name Scott. So when people were like, "Your real name's Ronald, Ronald McDonald," yeah, that's awful. Yeah, so, and that's really kind of it. There's other people we'll get to. Frank Grillo is in this movie as the other dude. He's in it for just a minute. He's one of the main dudes on the poster, and he's in it for like maybe fifteen, twenty minutes. Well, it's probably because like, wow, he's in pretty good shape. He is, and he's been in other movies, too. He was in the Marvel movies for a hot second. He was in that movie I watched um, where the day starts over and over again. It's on Hulu. I watched it in one of these movies I'm watching throughout the year. Groundhog's Day? Exactly. Mm -hmm. He was Bill Murray. (laughs) I thought so. His uh, IMDb profile is him standing next to a motorcycle in a wife beater showing off his muscles. Well, hell, you got him. Flaunt it. Well, he's got a movie coming out soon called The Resurrection of Charles Manson. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Boss Level. It's called Boss Level. Oh. It's basically, not to go too much into the movie, but the day resets over and over and over again if he dies. And he's trying to figure out why and stop it. I see. It's pretty fun. That seems like it'd be, it could be interesting if done correctly. It's got Mel Gibson in it, so people probably right. skipped it. Oh, I mean, no. <laughs> Look, he's a good actor. I will give him that. Don't agree at all with his politics or beliefs. Oh, I don't give a shit about that. Yeah, I know. I know. But I know people are like, well, he's a piece of shit that said this and this about black people and Jewish people. And like, he's terrible. But look, you got to separate the art from the artist if you want. Like everybody in Hollywood's insane. Exactly. There's there's always something with somebody. Yeah. Like you dig fur enough. Fur enough. Fur Jesus. enough. Jesus Christ. <laughs> um. You're going to get some dirt. Exactly. Well, with this movie, we open up with him, and he is, like, in this super high-tech house. Kind of. It doesn't really go into more. They just say that it's got a lot of high-tech stuff in it, but you never really see it, because I don't know if they had the money to. He's got a lot of gadgets. Really, all you see is just the the wall that has, like, this big clock thing on it. That's kind of a lot for me. (laughs) (laughs) He's supposed to be this high-tech billionaire dude. or Billionaire, who knows, but how much money he's got but he's like he tells her later where he's like oh i developed an app that's like super high-tech security that i sold it and now i'm like super super rich however if you get the code to this app that i developed it just completely negates it all there's no backups or anything (laughs) he's just like if you get the code my app is completely useless as you will do here in just a minute i was trying to look up what the name he called it it was like dog something oh Watchdog, Watchdog security. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Found but at the same time. It's just so funny to me because he ends up giving Sky the codes later because he's like, I trust her. I love her so much. And then she just has access to like his entire life. Yeah. They, she came home with him the first night they met. Yeah. Yeah. So well, basically we'll, we'll give some background real quick is that he is going through a divorce with another blonde 
European kind of lady. Mm-hmm. She's got a little bit of an accent. So I was like, well, he has a type. Blonde white lady. And he is like a ginger. Keep that in mind. A ginger type of guy. Like redhead. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry if that's derogative. I, I don't, don't think know. so. He's ginger, okay. red, redheaded ginger guy, yeah, and he's got a little little cool beard coming in. Mm-hmm. Keep that in mind. Their daughter. That's why I'm saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to say this the nicest way I can. Their daughter looks mixed. Right. She looks kind of like she would have a white. Adopted. Like they would have adopted her, yeah, because she's like she looks like she would have one white parent, one like. Interracial. Interracial parent, yeah. Which there's nothing wrong with it. But it does not match. You look at both the parents and you're like, wait a second. You're like, which one of these do not match? <laughs> um, he should have had a line where he was like, look, when we got married, I took your daughter in with you. you right. Know? But it was like, this is my daughter and I love her. And she's like, yeah, yeah, that's your daughter. <laughs> but I will say that this daughter is a badass. She is. Towards yeah. the end. I'm like, she's like the best actor in here. <laughs> that's saying a lot. <laughs> Yeah, we were we were kind of laughing at that because she's like, "Hi, Dad!" I'm like, Dad, who? <laughs> <laughs> Just not great casting. I mean, yeah, she is a great the best part of this movie, which doesn't really tell you very much, or doesn't doesn't say very much about this movie. But he's going through a horrid divorce, and he lives by himself. And I don't know really where this is, but he's in like a super house. It's like a nice house on top of a hill somewhere. Yeah, in BFE, wherever I don't know. But he is kind of a loner now. He's like super depressed because of his his divorce and he just stays in his house. And he does his shopping at midnight, they say, around. Because he's at this grocery store at midnight. And who does he run into but Skye? Yes. Because she's like, excuse me, sir. Um, I need help picking out wine. (laughs) I would never ask just a random person. I don't know. That's just my personality, though. I'm just like, I'll figure it out. Thank you. Well, we'll find out why she did. Well, exactly. I don't know. So they have a little meet cute. And he's like, oh, I would pair this wine with this wine. And she's like, well, thank you very much. Oh, one thing I want to point out here is at this beginning, I wondered if she was really talking. Because if you watch her mouth and the dialogue, Mm -hmm. it does not seem like she is the one that's talking. There's a lot of that in this movie. You question it. Yeah. And we actually rewound it and I was proven wrong. But you, you're just like, wait, that just doesn't seem right. Or that yeah. doesn't look right. I know. Because it's just very strange. She's like, excuse me, sir. <laughs> sir, can you help me pick out this wine? I'm like, is that your real voice? Wow. It's kind of deep. Um, so wouldn't you know it? She's He's going out to the parking lot and sees that her Uber has canceled and... She's like, oh my god, I can't believe this happened. Isn't this just strange that all this happens now and I need a ride? And he, she says she needs a ride to her apartment. Right. But this place that she and the roommate that she has currently is a motel room. It, yeah, like a sleazy Yeah, and they motel. kept like, she's like, I'm staying with my roommate, Looney Lisa, at her apartment and when they eventually show this place, you're like, this is a cheap motel. Yeah. Like, this is not an apartment. <laughs> I'd be like, do you have sex for money? <laughs> That's what it looks like. Yeah, she says something about, well, I'm staying with my friend and Looney Lisa. And oh, she gets, she's Looney, wouldn't she, you know it? Looney Tunes. They do end up going to this apartment. And she's like, kind of freaks out a little bit or doesn't want to go in. And he's all like... Hey, we just met. It's midnight. How about you come back to my house? Yeah. And she's like, sure. Like, you should have known something was up. She kind of resisted at first. She's like, no, no, I need to go in. And she even got out of the car like she was going to go in and she waited for a second. Yeah. And then he's like, are you sure? Yeah. I'm not going to kill you. She's like, fine. And here's where we get John Malkovich for the first time, because as they drive off, John Malkovich, like, peers through a window. Like, he's all, like, suspicious about something where he's like, hmm, what's going on here? And a little creepy. He is very creepy in this movie, and I thought, as the movie was going on, that he was going to be, like, her pimp. Right. That, you know, after they had sex, he was going to show up, and I'm going to do his voice from the movie Rounders, where he plays a Russian dude, where I thought he would be like, I need the money. (laughs) I'll do whatever the fuck I want. That's how he says that in the movie. But no, it turns out he's just a pervert that owns this apartment slash sleazy motel. Mm. 
And every line that Sky has in this movie is terrible. Like, they show up in the house, and she has a line of, like, I love the dark. Yeah! <laughs> and and then she's like, oh, are you house-sitting for your parents? He's like, I'm a grown adult. Yeah, this is this is my house, lady. Yeah. And this is where you get his backstory, where he's like, well, I'm worth some odd amounts of money that we never really know. But <laughs> and we'll talk about it when we get to the, his mm. bank account later. But Oh, yeah. Big fuck up. And I put in my notes here that he's acting like someone who murders people regularly because she's like, oh, what do you do? He's like, I created a, an app called Watchdog Security, and I sold it. I think they wanted it to start out like he was the bad guy. Yeah. Like you didn't not really to know. spoil it if you haven't seen it, but he is not the bad guy. And he tells her that, and she gives him some backstory. She was like, "Well, I'm a model. Uh, I used to live in California or some shit, and now I'm a waitress at this bar here." And da 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 da. They end up going through wine. They're drinking like a very rare wine. He's got a huge collection. Yada yada <laughs> yada. They end up having. The sex we were talking about. But he took her to his wine cellar, because what rich person doesn't have a wine cellar? I guess. Like, if we were super rich, I wouldn't, because I don't really drink wine. No. I mean, it would be like white wine or the sweet wine. But anyway. And he's like, well, what would you like? And she's like, the most expensive one. Yeah. Or the, the most rare, expensive. I'm like, you just met this lady, and you're going to open up your most rare <laughs> wine? <laughs> I said the same lady. thing because she's like, I'm in the mood for something rare and and extremely expensive. And he's like, well, there's one right here. Go get a, like, like a filet mignon or something. <laughs> I'm like, uh, lady, I'm not doing this for you. We just met. So they're sitting on the couch later. Some time has passed. And I'm like, what time is it? Because <laughs> it was midnight when they were grocery shopping. The sun's coming up. And she's like, well, I got to get back. Can you drive me back to the hotel? And I'm like, you both have been drinking for what you said was like a few hours. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and he's like, well, you can stay here if you want. And then the sex. This this sex. <laughs> Shelly's making her hands again. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the next day. They drop her off at the hotel. Or, or does she walk back? I can't remember. No, she walks back, which I... If, yeah. From the way it sounds, it's kind of a good distance. Yeah, you would think so. She woke up at like... Well, she didn't go to sleep. <laughs> there, It's like four in the morning when they do this. Doesn't go to sleep and walks back. If she's still drunk, it probably doesn't seem that far. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> she blacked out halfway through. It's fine. She walks back to the hotel and John Malkovich is like, walk of shame. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> That's funny. He doesn't have an accent in this, but I just love his Russian accent in movie rounders. They they play poker in that movie and Matt Damon's like, don't split the chips or whatever how he says it because he kept throwing them in the pot. Oh. And Malkovich is like, I will splash the pot however the fuck I want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. His tell in that movie playing poker is he eats his Oreos. That's how he can tell that he's bluffing. He's like, mm. oh. He's like, mm. He doesn't have a good hand. Uh, he does. It's very funny. We'll have to watch that for the podcast at one point. But when he realizes he's lost, he goes, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> He just keeps saying, chick, 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 chick. Chick, chick. <laughs> That's funny. So this roommate, Looney Lisa, is super pissed off at Sky for not telling her where she was. You're like, at first, you're like, well, are they together? Because she's acting like a psycho girlfriend. Yeah, and she also looks real rough. Isn't she in her underwear? She's yeah. in one scene, and I'm just like, well, why? What? Women, I wouldn't assume, just walk around in their underwear everywhere. She's half naked like, yeah. this whole time. So I'm like, well, maybe she is a prostitute, but she seems like she's a little strung out. Yeah. But it doesn't explain any of it. Not yet. No, you're just like, well, she is very crazy, I guess, because she's like, why didn't you call me? Where were you? Who were you with? And you're like, are they together? Yeah, calm down, Rumi. <laughs> Looney. <laughs> Looney Rumi. <laughs> Chris is thinking about Sky. You know, he had her once, can't stop thinking about her. So he goes to this bar where she works and they they end up meeting again. And she's like, oh, you came to see me. How sweet. That's great. And he's like, yeah, my ex-wife said to move on. <laughs> like, whoa, that's a hell of a pickup line. Yeah, right. He's like, if she didn't say that, I wouldn't have. Yeah. But, I would still be thinking about her. You know, she's moving on, I guess. So I'll move on. She tells him, she's like, I am what they call damaged goods. <laughs> I'm like, who is it, lady? 
I don't know. Yeah, because it cuts to them like walking out of the bar. I guess the bar is closed down, and they're walking down the street with beers. Yeah. And I'm like, that doesn't happen. Where are they? I don't know. They're where can you do that? Some magical land where you What's can open. Cans. <laughs> <laughs> There's some magical land where you can open carry beers on the street. So they're talking, and she gives some background. She was like, oh, I didn't really have family. I was in foster homes, you know. And he was like, well, you know, my my childhood wasn't the greatest at all either. He's like, my parents weren't really here for him. He's like, maybe that's why I developed the security app so I could feel safe because I never felt safe before. Mm. The security app is my mom. (laughs) (laughs) Can you tuck me in, mommy? He's like, I am a security app. No, I cannot. (laughs) Watchdog, can you nurse me? He's like sucking on a faucet. <laughs> <He's> like, or <laughs> he makes like a little nipple in the wall. He's like, nurse me, watchdog app. Mm. It pumps milk through. <laughs> She's like, whoa, you're crazy. I'm not going to pull this grift on you anyway. Oh, you're, you've God. got problems. <laughs> so you pointed this out, and it's probably one of the funniest points of this movie, but they come around the corner to his car, and there's someone trying to break into it. Yeah. And how is he trying to break into it? You pointed it out. With a tire iron. He's trying to get this tire iron in the window like he's trying to pop the lock. Like a jimmy. You yeah. know, he's trying to jimmy it, which is in between the window, which you have to have an older vehicle to even yeah. do that. But he's doing it with a tire iron. Which is not going to ever get in between the window and the door. Absolutely not. I didn't even notice. I was taking notes. You're like, he's trying to open that door with a tire iron. Unless he's like literally trying to pry the door off which i don't think would work either but i don't think you could get the end of the tire iron in the door at all no it's like too thick to get in there maybe i don't know we'll try maybe it later. just a tiny bit i don't know break the window would be easier <laughs> i guess it looked like he was like trying to open the door lock he's like getting a brick down there you know it's never gonna work he's like eh, eh, like trying to put this really thick piece of metal down the door <laughs> yeah they're like, hey, what the fuck's going on? This this dude, he's an Asian man. He's like, how about I kill you and fuck your hot girl? Whoa. The dialogue's not the greatest in no. this movie. Um, she automatically throws her beer, which is why I guess they were walking with them down the street. She throws and misses him and shatters the window on the guy's car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not cool. If, if you're going to do that, you got to make sure you're going to hit. Yeah, it wasn't even close either. She's like, oh, and it goes like, to the right. <laughs> It's like every time when I throw something, it's just the wrong way. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like you're aiming, if th- you're going for it, and then it just goes the other way. You're trying to hit something dead center in the front of you, and you hit the person standing to the right. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, you should look up the video on YouTube. I think it's 50 Cent, or somebody threw a baseball at an opening game, and he did that. Oh. Like, <laughs> People were like, whoa. Poor guy. Yeah. That's embarrassing. He's like, I don't throw baseballs. I spend all my time in the club. (laughs) So she throws the beer and the Asian man gets pissed off. So he comes over and he breaks Chris's leg. Hits him with a tire iron. Yeah. Shatters his leg, it looks like, because when the next we see Chris. That's how the movie got the name. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I guess. That's the only shattered in here. (laughs) Well, they're shattered people. It doesn't really make sense, though, as a title, yeah. Is it shattering his life? Probably, yeah. But still, not really, not at the end. Shattering his money. Basically, now we get to the point of the movie is that they come back, he's in a wheelchair, and he's got like a full cast on his leg. Yeah. And she's like, well, I'll take care of you. I'll be your nurse. And she's like, I'll take care of you. I'll give you your medicine. I'll cook and I'll clean for you. And then I'll have sex with you. Yeah. And he's like, you're hired. I think he asked her, like, what are her... her um, what Qualifications? Are yeah. Mm. And she's like, well, none. I've, I'm not a nurse. Being <laughs> but, blonde and sexy. But I will have sex with you. Hired. And he does have a... Li- I think one of them, I think it's her, where she's like, I can take care- take better care of you than some hatchet-faced nurse. Yeah. And like, whoa. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, and, he, and he's like, how do you know that? And she's like, I think it's the qualifications. Yeah. I'm just like, oh. So he lays down on the couch and she's like, well, I'm going to go get my stuff and I'll come back. By the way, what if you're asleep? And he's like, well, I guess you're going to have to get the codes to everything so you can get back in and leave Mm. whenever you want. Mm -hmm. That's not going to bite me in the ass. Thanks for explaining that and nothing else in the movie. 
I know if he was just it would have been. I always imagine like how different the movies could be. Like it's when it sh- you know shifts if mm-hmm. it went differently. Like if she's like, well, what if you're asleep when I get back? Be like, oh, I won't be. Yeah, but I might need the codes. No, you won't. I'll be up. No, just set. You know, like you would think that it would be like, oh, just say, you know, hello. Yeah, and then it'll wake me up. You know, the alarm or whatever will wake me up. Well, we see later, like, whenever somebody approaches this house, it looks like it notifies them. Yeah. They'll be like, oh, the alarm will go off when that's, you walk up. That's kind of what I was getting at. It's just like, oh, this yeah. alarm will notify me when you're here, so you don't need shit, lady. <laughs> so the movie just is, like, her trying to get the codes from him the whole time. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, I, the the alarm didn't go off the other day, so I might need the codes to get in. Like, no, you're okay. No, I can do it remotely if I'm away. <laughs> Give me the goddamn codes! <laughs> So we go back to this apartment complex, and Sky is talking to Looney Lisa, and this is where we kind of realize that they're a couple. Yeah. Because Looney Lisa is like, oh, I need you. Where were you? I, I need you so much. And they start making out. Yeah, another thing I want to point out, I don't remember if it happened before. I think it happened before because she's, like, taking care of him, and she's in a hot tub. Yes. And he's, you know, hanging one leg out or one leg in or whatever. But then he's like, oh, I'm ready to go to bed. Puts him into bed, and she's like, oh, here's a pain pill. Yeah. And she just takes the pill out of the bottle mm-hmm. directly to his mouth. No what? water. Yeah, like, what, am I, what am I supposed to do with this? No sitting up. And he just swallows it like some kind of psycho. <laughs> I know. No water, flat on his back. Yeah, how do you do that? I don't know. You're going to die, yo. I, die. I have no idea. It's it's very strange. Yeah. It, no, I didn't mean to... No, it, no, it's definitely a very strange thing, but, and we'll stop going line by line here. I know people are like, oh, you know, maybe don't want to. No, go. people don't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, there is a weird line here where Malkovich, as she walks back to the apartment, Malkovich is like, oh, you're, you're three months behind on rent. And that's why I'm like, mm. this is an apartment. This isn't a motel. <laughs> this is a very shitty ass motel. There are. I mean, there are places like there's a really, really shitty landlord here in Springfield that buys really shitty houses and doesn't fix them and rents them out. But yeah. anyway, um, he had like this hotel. It was like an old one. When we go by it today, I'll point it out. But sure. it's an old one. And he rented it out like no, okay. apartments like he must have renovated it. Because you have pretty much everything you need in a hotel True. room. You got a bathroom, mm-hmm. not necessarily a kitchen, but you could make one. Yeah. So anyway, it rented it out. So I think it happens. It's just like old, rundown motels that somebody's like, "Hey, I can get some people to rent in here." And yeah. They're, they're never very great people. No, I just took it as like the movie was cheap and didn't have a way to rent like real apartments. <laughs> <laughs> that could be too. <laughs> but you're right. I think that does happen. There is a line here where he's like, oh, you're three months behind or whatever. And, and Sky is like, oh, Ronald, if you kicked us out, you wouldn't be able to stare at us in our bikinis. Mm-hmm. And you're like, ew, Ronald. Yeah, he's a perv. But Lisa does have a line here when they start making out. She's like, if you leave me, I will die. Literally die. Yeah. And they start making out. And you're like, what's going on here? Holy shit. Yeah. But when she says that, Sky's like, I know. She's like, I'll die if you leave. And Sky's like, I know. And then they start making out. And I'm like, yeah. whoa. And this is where I wrote in my notes here. We don't find this out. But I'm like, was that Asian man in on it? She seems to be pretty good at manipulating mm. people. And this is where we get the scene. Yeah, she comes back and they start like, there's like a little bit of a like a montage of them kind of hanging out, getting to know each other here. Uh, she has a weird, very bad line of, I love the taste of you. <laughs> I wrote that down. Mm. Uh, but yeah, we see him like sitting there in the hot tub with his leg, one leg in and the bad leg out. He tells her that he loves her here. <laughs> and I wrote, oh, yeah. I was like, what an idiot. <laughs> wow. She says to him, oh, I feel the same about you and it scares me. No. Oh. And he's like, well, what are we going to do? She goes, live happily ever after. Like the the dialogue in this lady, I just can't get it get it through enough on how bad this dialogue and she is as an actress. Maybe she's great in other things, but this she is not. Uh, at this point, we do get back to the hotel motel apartment complex, and Ronald is getting into their hotel room. He opens the door and he's like, "Lisa, are you here? 
Lisa, are you decent? I hope not. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, you're such a good actor. What's happening? Dude, he... I feel so bad for him in this, especially later when his big scene happens, but the dude's an amazing actor. Mm -hmm. Like, he's doing the Robert De Niro Al Pacino school of, as you got older, be in shitty movies. Well, or he just owes somebody a favor, you know? <laughs> he's got a huge drug habit, or he likes to buy very... He, it's the Johnny Depp thing. He likes to buy a bunch of wine. <laughs> That was his wine cellar that they showed. <laughs> uh, yeah. Wait, which bottle of wine did you open? Oh, fuck. That was the very expensive rare one. <laughs> I told you not to touch my wine. <laughs> um, he finds Lisa dead. It looks like she, she is in the bathtub. She's got a huge cut on her wrist and down her arm. It looks like she's killed herself. And she's naked. Oh, yeah, of course. There is some nudity in here, like when they have sex, and she's naked, of course. Thank God he Malkovich didn't, like, snap a picture in this or anything. He's like, oh, God. Yikes. And at this point, you're kind of like, oh, God, did Lisa kill herself because she, you know, feels like Sky is leaving her? You know? Mm -hmm. and you're like, shit, did she? Left her for Chris? Yeah. There is a very funny point here now where Malkovich has called the police, and as the police are there investigating, the news shows up. Mm -hmm. And Malco they're like, what the fuck? How'd the news find out about this? And Malkovich has called them. Yeah. And he's like, yes, yes, over here. I will give you a, an interview. I'll tell you everything. My name's Ronald, blah, blah, blah. Kind of reminds me Chippendale's show that we're watching. Oh, yeah. When he calls the, the news people. Yeah, well, he, uh, yes, yes, because he called the um, the religious church next door or whatever. That's right. And then the news. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, oh, we'll get uh, free publicity for this. <laughs> I think that's what he was hoping for. He tells the cops at some point, he was like, well, Lisa was pretty sad because her roommate Sky left. Well, when I say roommate, I mean that in the Greek sense, meaning like they were having sex. Oh. And here's the funny thing is that none of these police ever investigate Sky. One of them did comment that she's not in the system. Oh, yeah. You're supposed to be like, oh, she's but not. You wouldn't be in the system if you didn't do anything wrong. As well. I guess they couldn't find any like birth certificates or anything like that if they tried to search for you. Maybe. I don't know. But they just said her first name. That's all he knew was the first name. <laughs> he searches Sky and he's like, my God, there's 30,000 searches in the like, U.S. Wait, there is no Sky out there. <laughs> <laughs> Where is the Sky? Uh, Chief, I'm looking at it up here. They start firing <laughs> into the Sky. I found it. You killed your roommate. <laughs> Yeah, that's another kind of like, oh, what's going on? Sky's not in the police's system. All right. And it's funny because the news, as they show up, they move past Malkovich to the police. They're yeah. like not interested in him at all. You're like, okay, you're not, you know, what we want. So at some point here, I think while Sky is getting her shit, Chris is talking to his ex-wife and the ex is like, oh, I'm, you know, thank you for signing the divorce papers. How about I bring our daughter over on Friday so you can hang out and see her? And he's like, that sounds great. That'll come up later in the movie in a very important time. Exactly. Add a little more tension to the movie. We see Sky at some point, like, take his phone. She, like, takes his phone off the charger, and he does get a little weirded out by her, so he looks through her purse, and he just ends up dropping everything out of it. Yeah, he's not in a good position to be inconspicuous. Right, yeah, he's limping around on his leg. And what's funny is his cast is on his entire leg. It goes up to, like, his butt. Like, yeah. how high it goes. I don't know why they... I mean, I know that's a thing, but I I wouldn't think if you broke, like, your lower leg... Yeah. That they would cast your whole leg. I don't know. I guess it depends on where you got hit. And if they did that, you'd probably be in the hospital for a little bit, because you got to go through rehab and stuff. Yeah, it's like the very next day, they're home. Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, that was crazy. Thank goodness we're home. And she's like... I, or it's like, oh, God damn it. He was in the hospital for three fucking months. I'm conning this <laughs> son of a bitch. He drops all the shit, and she comes out of the shower, and she's like, that's okay. I would be worried about myself as well. I know you're just trying to check me out and see that I'm okay. And to take his mind off of it, she drops the towel. Mm -hmm. And they get it on again. Yeah, why not? So this is where we get to it then. The final, the big, the big switch of the movie is the next day, Chris is looking for his phone. He can't find it. Sky is gone. And... As he's looking for his phone, he sees on the TV that Lisa, Looney Lisa, 
has killed herself. Mm-hmm. Supposedly. And <laughs> this note doesn't make very much sense to me, but Sky comes in with a gigantic bucket of KFC chicken. Was it KFC? I don't think they got KFC. I think it's just a it's a KFC like bucket. Yeah. They had the red rings. Did it really? Okay. I thought it was I like a weird so. color, but I don't know. Eh, it could have been. I don't think they got KFC in it, but it's a big bucket. And he turns off the news and stuff, but she comes in and he's like, I can't find my phone. And she's like, oh, you'll find it. It'll turn up. Have some food with me. And he's like, I I really want to find my phone because he's kind of freaked out that he saw Lisa's dead. Mm -hmm. And she just starts chowing down on this chicken. And this is like the worst scene. Yes. Because she's eating this chicken leg for like five minutes. And it looks like she's chowing down, but, but it's not going anywhere. Right, because she does tell him, she's like, oh, you know, people think about models is that we don't eat. But the thing is, is we eat like a horse. And she's like, <laughs> like chewing and eating all this chicken and stuff. Yeah. And he's like, look, I, I think something's wrong. He's like, I need to call the police because Lisa, I showed that she was dead. And, and she's like, well, that would be very stupid to call the police because I killed Lisa. What? And you're like, oh, my God. She goes through her whole thing here. She's like, well, Lisa was a great person to be with at the time because she had a good apartment. It was right near where you were. Because basically we learned that she has been studying him for quite some time. Mm -hmm. She had like this telescope in her room. This telescope. (laughs) Yeah, she had a telescope in her room that could see into his house. And she's like, I I took notes. I knew exactly when you went to the grocery store, when you did your shopping so we could accidentally bump into each other. When you pissed, when you shit, (laughs) when you slept. Like, when that you showered, necessary? is that necessary to take notes on? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta know if you're you're regular, you know. It's important. Yeah, and it's funny because the flashback is we see her in her underwear sitting at this telescope looking at his house. Like, why is she just in her underwear? Why do movie? you have to be in your underwear? But she's like looking, taking notes on him, and I'm like, what the fuck? It's kind of dumb. She tases him here. She's like, sorry, lover, the honeymoon is over. Oh damn, that was quick. Yeah. Yeah. And this is where she becomes one of the worst actresses I've seen because she is acting on like 11 at this point, (laughs) trying to be a crazy psycho lady and she just can't do it. No. (laughs) She's like, I was doing it so I could see you. Like, I'm learning everything about you. She's just going crazy. Mm -hmm. And she's like, this is how a crazy person talks, right? Malkovich is going through their apartment and he sees a telescope in, in her room and he's like looking through it. And for some odd reason, he sees a naked woman doing yoga. Yeah. And he's like, hello. And I thought he was going to start jerking off, but thankfully he just sits there. And it doesn't really show that there's other houses around, but I guess that there is. See, yeah, you're right, because I thought it was Sky at first, because I'm like, it doesn't seem like there's many houses where he lives. And this lady's tatted, and I'm like, yeah. no, we saw Sky naked. She doesn't have any tattoos. Well, it was kind of dark, and I'm like, oh, she's like super tatted up? Maybe not. I don't know, but... Uh, he eventually sees into Chris's house and sees that he's, like, tied up. Yeah. And you would think, oh, my gosh, let's call the police. But no. No, he's a piece of shit, so he's going to get something out of this. Yeah. So we get back to the thing. He, Chris is now tied up in a wheelchair, and Sky is there, and he's like, why are you doing this? She's like, because you're rich, and you have things that I want. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I'm going to ask you questions and you need to be as truthful as you as you can. And he's like, I'm not telling you fucking shit. And she pulls a drill out and drills into his leg. Yeah. But it's funny because she before she does it, she goes, what's your mother's maiden name? Yeah. And he's like, fuck you. She's like, into his leg. And he's like screaming. And she goes, what's your mother's maiden name? <laughs> it was awful. I'm like, what is wrong with this lady? I think you're doing a better job. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, so this is a very funny part here. We did rewind it because we wanted to see how much money he was worth, but we see Sky with a laptop transferring all the money out of his account. Mm. And I was like, at the end of the movie, I'm like, I think it said he had like 200 million because we were like, how much money is this guy worth? I'll post this on our Instagram page and Twitter, but in his checking account, he has, I'll just say the numbers and commas, 335,679,10. That's not a real number. That's not enough. Yeah. And his checking has 200,679.2. Mm-hmm. 
one zero <laughs> or no one zero. The the picture will make sense. Yeah. Basically, is there's not enough numbers in there to be. It's like missing to be a real number. It's missing a number because you have to have three numbers to have a comma. You know. Yeah. Basic. And basic after the three numbering. numbers would be a decimal if you're going into the sense. Mm-hmm. So we rewound that and thought that was funny because they were like. He doesn't have real money in there. If I was her, I'd be like, "Is this real? <laughs> this seems fake." And I that is that seems a little nitpicky, right? But it does linger on that shot for just a little bit. Yeah. So if you're gonna linger on a shot, you, you kind of need to make it right. And I don't know whose job that was. You know, Joe messed up again. It doesn't make sense, and it's just funny to me because you would think. If someone is transferring 200 or 300 million, like a total of like 600 million dollars out of an account, there would be some people asking some questions. <laughs> yeah. Be like, hello, uh, we see you're transferring and closing your account and transferring into somebody's checking account. What the fuck? Yeah. Why? We don't want to lose your millions of dollars. So yeah. we're going to call you. <laughs> Maybe there would be some uh, safeguards in there to prevent that from happening. Mm-hmm. And I would imagine at the end of this movie, he somehow would get that back and be like, they held me hostage and made me do it. Absolutely. Yeah. And if you are if you have that much money and it's not insured or secured in some sort of fashion, yeah, do so immediately. Yeah, because you never know. Sky could show up. A Sky could show up and, and take all your money. Don't. Trust any lady you, you know, meet in a grocery store. Grocery store is like, hello, I've been following you. But like, your lips don't match what you're saying. Yeah, wait. <laughs> you sound a little different, too. Hmm. What are you talking about? <laughs> this is very funny because she's like, I'm going to take all your stuff and start my own company called Skyco. <laughs> 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 but like, well, that sounds an awful lot like. Geico. No, it does. Wow. But that's so funny. And he, at some point here, grabs her throat like he's choking her. And she shows him a video of his wife and daughter at like a park. Yeah. She's like, oh, well, you know, your ki- your wife, and- your ex-wife and daughter are being watched, buddy. And this is when we really know the daughter is his because he's like, no. Yeah, my daughter. No, my daughter. It'd be funny after all this is over, the wife was like, I had an affair. Well, That's not your real daughter. Obviously. <laughs> we do find out now that the man who broke his leg, the Asian man, isn't on it because she sees all this artwork that Chris has around and she s- starts taking pictures. The Asian man shows up and he's like, oh, yeah, thanks, Sky. Thank you so much. And he's like, I broke your leg, didn't I, buddy? I'm going to take everything and we're going to sell it. Yeah. Like, how do you find these people? But I, I guess know. she works in a bar. Not that all bad people go to a bar. <laughs> She's like... Hi, here's your drink, by the way. Am I? Can I sell uh, high-end art to you at a good price? Yeah. Uh, would you be willing to break a man's leg? And are you also a international uh, art fence that I can sell art to? It's stolen. Man, you really pegged me, lady. You know, you know your people. <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> um, well, at this point, Malkovich shows up to the house. Sky is gone. She's like driving, we see, but he shows up in a ski mask. And Chris is sitting there in his wheelchair all tied up, and he sees from the security cameras Malkovich approach. We cut to Sky, who's got Chris's phone, and she sees through the security system that Malkovich is coming. So she turns around immediately, like, to go back towards the house. Malkovich gives a very long speech, and, you know, maybe he's doing it to, you know, to be his actor, you know, trying to do a good acting job and stuff. But he's all like, oh, we don't get much uh, billionaires living around here, and... You guys live here because you want to be normal and, oh, you're never going to be like us. Blah, 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 blah. It goes on Yeah, and how he's up on top of a hill looking down on all the, you know, poor people or whatever is kind of what he was insinuating. Yeah. I think they thought, oh, if we have him act for a little bit, then this movie will be great. Yeah, people will be like, wow, that movie wasn't that great until Malkovich went on that long speech. Mm-hmm. That wasn't the case, though, unfortunately. Yeah, no, Chris is like, please free me. And Malkovich is like, well, you're going to have to pay me in order to, for me to do this. Yeah. And he's like, I don't have any fucking money. I'm tied to this goddamn wheelchair. But he sees that there is a Picasso on the wall, which I guess the Asian dude didn't take with him. Right? <laughs> he's like, we're going to strip all this shit out. But I guess he left that one. I mean, they, he says it's worth like, what, billion? Six or seven million. A million. Okay. 
That's a lot. Yeah, it's a Picasso, so it must be pretty expensive. But he he's going to take the Picasso, and he starts to free Chris. But wouldn't you know it, Sky comes back. There is a funny line I just remembered here where uh, Chris is like, please, you got to call the cops. Wait, Don't free me yet. Call the cops first. And he's like, I don't have a phone. It causes brain cancer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Like, oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. So Sky comes back and Malkovich is freaking out. He grabs a knife from the kitchen and Sky has this big ass samurai sword. Where did she get that? Did we see it earlier in the movie somewhere? I can't remember, but yeah, she just has it. I mean, it must have. Maybe I missed it. But maybe so. I'm sure that helps it make sense, but it is dumb because Malkovich has this tiny little butcher knife and Chris is like, kill her! Kill her! I gotta fucking kill her! Mm-hmm. Uh, he runs away. And she follows him and is like, oh, Ronald. And she uses the system like she knows it. Yes. Like, this is a brand new, Like, well, I mean, maybe she did a research because it seems like she did a research on him. But she's like playing loud music and closing doors. Or not, I don't know if closing doors, but yeah, kind of leading him. She turns on the flight of the Valkyries, the music. She blasts it like, dun, 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 dun. Yeah. And she does this really crazy shake. She's like getting ready to go up the stairs and she goes like, yeah. She does this weird shake to like prep herself to get in the mood to murder. It was was her psycho shake. I guess. They're going to come out with a new dance like that. At this point, Chris does get himself free and he runs to the car that Sky came in, but it's locked. So he runs off and she finds Malkovich in this garage and he swipes at her with the knife, and she dodges like she's a trained boxer. Yeah. He's like, huh. She's like, she's like ha. <laughs> she kills Malkovich, and she's acting like she's orgasming while she's doing it. She's like, oh, oh, oh. Like, That's awful. The <laughs> and then blood is squirting everywhere on her, and yeah. she just keeps stabbing and stabbing and stabbing, because that's what... A psycho lady would do, right? Exactly. That's how psycho people do. That's the only way they they orgasm is by killing people. stabbing over and over. And, well, since the car was locked, Chris does run and finds, like, a snowmobile. Mm -hmm. And he drives off. He's driving like a maniac because you can't take it nice and easy if you're trying to get away. You have to just go balls out. No, and I even said that before anything happened. I'm like, okay, now's the time to take a little breath. Yeah. And make sure you get everything right. Yeah, I mean, there's no way that they could get you if you're going over, like, the hills. Yeah. She's all the way back there. She can't, like, drive through the snowy hills in a car. Exactly. But he's driving balls out and, of course, like, hits something and falls off. He rolls down this hill directly into the street in front of this car that almost hits him. Yes. And wouldn't you know it, here's Frank Grillo. And I'm like, well, he's on the poster. And this he can't be getting away from Sky at this point. So he's got to be in on it. Mm Mm-hmm. Frank Grillo, he's kind of playing him at first as he finds him. He's like, oh, my God, buddy. Oh, my God, what happened? <laughs> Holy shit, dude. I almost hit you like a hit you like a deer. <laughs> he puts him in the car and he's like, please, you have to call 911. He's like, you got it, man. You got it. I'm going to call 911 right, right now. And he does. And he's like, oh, they, they want to talk to you. And it's obviously Sky on the phone. Yes. It's a woman. And she's like, 911, what's your emergency? And he's like, there's a fucking crazy lady at my house. Is she trying to kill me? And he realizes that Frank Grillo, I think his name in this movie is The Stranger or The Man, because we don't ever get his name. Is Sebastian. Do we ever get that? I don't think so. Wow. I just looked it up before we watched the movie. Yeah, I see that now. Very strange. Mm. He's on the phone with 911 and he hangs up because he realizes that Frank Grillo is taking him right back. To his house. Yeah. And Sky is standing in the driveway with the phone. And that's how you know that he was talking to her. This scene was kind of neat, I thought. It's kind of like a twist. Yeah. yeah. I, I like how it played out. I didn't realize he was on the poster. So I was just like, oh, maybe he's going to get away. Yeah. And then the whole phone call, as soon as I heard her voice, I'm like, I think that's her. And then they yeah. pulled up and I'm like, well, that's kind of nice. It would have been cool. I, I was like, this could either go one of two ways. Either he is in on it with her. Or it's going to turn into, like, a revenge movie now. And, like, Chris is going to go after Sky and take her out. Oh, maybe. Frank Grillo is going to help him or something. I don't know. Hmm. So we now get the backstory of this. It turns out, first off, Frank Grillo and Sky they kiss. 
And you're like, okay, I guess they're a couple. And he's like, I'm her stepfather. Oh, boy. That is disgusting. Yeah, he's like, I married her mother and then her mother died. Does it imply that he killed the mother? I don't, I kind of got that since she was in foster homes that he just adopted her. I thought. But maybe he's the real stepdad. I think maybe she was in foster homes Mm. and stuff. And then I think. I I don't know. I I think I kind of was like, whatever at this point. (laughs) Yeah, you're like, whatever, man. The, basically, he raised her to be a con artist, mm-hmm. and they are together. So he's brought out her natural abilities. Frank Grillo has a very long speech here where he's like, he's like, you're looking down on people, and we're down there looking up at you waiting to take your stuff. Oh, that's right. I thought John Malkovich said that, but it was it was Frank. My bad. Yeah, Frank Grillo says it. And Chris is like, I don't look down on people. He's like, just you two. And he's like... You guys are killers, and why are you deciding to take my shit? And Frank Grillo decides to turn it up to 11. He's like, because you weren't using it! (laughs) (laughs) Like, what? So we cut to later that night, and Chris is sitting in his wheelchair, and we have to hear him and Sky having sex. Or uh, Frank Grillo and Sky having sex. Mm -hmm. He sounds like a monkey. He's like, (laughs) 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 It's kind of like a dog. You're like, what the fuck? Uh, Sky comes out and she's talking to him and he's like, I would have given you anything. You know, you didn't have to steal it. I would have given you the world. Right. And he's like, you guys have taken absolutely everything from me. What else can I, what else do you need? And she's like, well, we do need your $15 million in bearer bonds that you have in your safe at the bank. Mm. And I'm like, at this point, I'm like, dude, it showed that you transferred at least $600 million out of his account. Right. Why do you need bear bonds even more? Like $15 million more. Red flag for a bank, for sure. Frank Grillo is like, well, you know, we're going to go to the bank. And Chris is like, well, you're never going to get the money because what about the biometric scan they've got? And Grillo is like, oh, yeah, that's right. You need a thumb to get in, don't you? And he cuts off Chris's thumb. Yeah. <laughs> the The ex-wife comes over and John Malkovich, oh. when he came over... He broke a window. Yes. So ex-wife comes up. They come through the door. She sees the broken glass. And she's just like, hmm, I wonder what's going on. Yeah. But Sky eventually basically knocks her out. And Yeah, because the daughter immediately runs to her bedroom that she's got there. Yeah. And then Sky comes around the corner with the daughter in her arms. Oh, that's right. And she's like, hi, how are you? And she's like, I didn't realize Chris had a friend. And she's like, I'm his nurse. And she's like, can you can you put my daughter down, please? And she does. And yeah, they. I think Frank Grillo comes around or something, but they knock the mom and the daughter out. Mm-hmm. Or something to put them all in the closet together. I don't know that they knock the daughter out. but Sky does take the phone from the ex-wife's purse and puts it in the microwave. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Like, I was always told that that would blow a microwave up if you put something like metal in it. Yeah, that could cause a fire. Yeah. I guess they're just so crazy they don't even care. No, they're just wild animals. So this is where we get the how Frank Grillo is going to get the money out of the bank is he's got his arm in like a cast where it's just his fingers are poking out of it. Mm-hmm. And now he's got like his thumb hidden in the cast and he positions Chris's thumb so it looks like his thumb is it's his. Right. And I don't know. <laughs> it just seems so strange. It's very weird. And there are so many different things that'll go wrong, that could go wrong with this that it just makes me laugh. Yeah, the thumb could pop right out because I don't know that they had it very secure. Well, we'll go ahead and talk about it now. So basically, Frank Grillo and Sky leave to go to the bank. And he and Sky are at this bank. And he's like, I need to withdraw my bearer bonds. All $15 million of them. And you think the bank would be like, well, that's going to take some time. Or I need to see an ID. You pointed that out. You think they would know what it looks like? Yeah. <laughs> They'd be like, oh, this man is a very high client with us. He's got $15 million in bonds in our – in a first off, in a safe deposit box. I wouldn't think that that would be so secure, but maybe it does. I don't know. But they're like, hmm, you know, when you opened this account with us, we did have to take an ID, a picture of you. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, no, we didn't. We just took your thumbprint and that was it. Yeah, as long as you can prove a thumbprint <laughs> – we don't give a fuck who you are. Yeah, because the bank teller is like, okay, well, we'll give you access to your box if you just put your thumb on this pad here. And 
Frank Grillo is trying to like put the thumb on the pad and it's like, oh, no heat. Lo-. Like basically it doesn't recognize his thumb because it's not warm. The heat sensor. Yeah. Yeah. And the only trivia on this movie is that the bank would have allowed him to set up multiple fingers for security processing. Mm-hmm. So they were like, if his thumb didn't work, the bank would have just allowed him to use a different finger. Yeah. So Grillo tries the thumb a few times. It won't recognize it. And the, the bank guy is like, let me go get somebody. <laughs> and Grillo like really pushes the thumb and it works. He's like, no, eh, I got it. <laughs> Just, I think it would have been so funny if the thumb popped off. I He's know, like, oh, my God. It's like, God damn it. Ah, my thumb popped off. <laughs> Just grabs it up off the floor and tries again. <laughs> My thumb came off. Can you give me access to my bear bonds? It's fine. I just need to see my bonds before I get my thumb reattached. <laughs> so while all this is going on, the they have just left Chris, his ex-wife, and his daughter in a closet at the house. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that they just left them there? I guess so. But I guess we see that it's like securely locked down because Chris tells his wife where he's like, they cut my thumb off to get the bonds at my bank. And the wife's like, it's cut back and forth for them getting into the vault and stuff. And his wife is like, the bonds? She's like, oh, my lawyer told me to take those bonds so I could have some leverage in the divorce. Oh, shit. So when they open the box, it's like a long note from the wife. And Grillo is pissed off, so he, they immediately leave the bank to go back to the house. Yeah, and then... Chris is telling his ex-wife, like, why would you do that? He's like, you thought I was going to screw you over? Like, what? Like, I just didn't want to divorce you because I still love you. That's it. Yeah. And Chris is like, oh, my God, they're going to come back to the house. We've got to get the fuck out of here. So they see, like, a vent that's at the top. And they're like, well, none of us can fit except for the little girl. And they... The little girl is like, I can do it. Yeah. And she, they put her through the vent and she crawls out. And he's like, now when you get out, you're going to have to run back in the house and unlock everything. And you remember the code. And she's like, yes, I do. Yeah. She's so cute. Yeah, she's pretty cool. And there's a scene at some point here where Grillo and Sky are coming back. And Grillo's like, you seem different on this job. Like, things are a little different with you now. You seem kind of weird. Mm-hmm. And she doesn't say anything. And as they are coming back to the house to to get Chris, they see on the security cameras on their phone that the daughter is out and is running around the house. Yeah, they're like, oh, shit. Like, God damn it, it's the kid. You pointed this out to me, but they come back in the house and Skye has her hair back in kind of like a ponytail or like a barrette or something like that. Yeah, it's like a bun. Like, it's it's back fancy looking. Yeah, like, oh, we're, we're fancy people. This is definitely our bearer bonds. But you pointed it out that when they come in the house, she immediately takes her hair down to like start killing these people. Yeah, like, oh, I got to take my hair down for this. Yeah, she shakes it out. I was like, blah, 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 the whole thing again. <laughs> it's just, it was just a weird part. Like, wouldn't you be like, I immediately need to find this kid? Yeah. And figure out where everybody is right now? I know. Yeah, they realize that Chris is gone and Grillo gives Sky a gun and he's like, kill him. And they're going through the house. And this made me laugh, too, because Frank Grillo is in, like, a room. And Chris pops out a closet like Michael Myers and, like, tries to stab him. Yeah. And I was like, dude. And this is when I looked it up. Like, Frank Grillo, I think, is in his 60s. And he looks like he is in fantastic shape. Absolutely. And I did, when I looked up, like, him being in shape, there was a lot of threads wondering if he's juicing. And maybe, I I don't know about that, but... Um, I wrote in my notes here, I was like, Frank Grillo would take this dude apart six ways from Sunday. Yes. Like, he is in the best shape of his life, and he's almost at the end of his life. (laughs) So, Sky comes in, and Grillo has Chris on the ground, and he's like, uh, it's like that in Loaded Weapon 1. I don't know if you've ever seen that with Samuel L. Jackson. He gets scared shooting a gun. Because uh, we'll have to watch it. But basically is whenever someone tells him to shoot a gun, they're like, shoot him, shoot him, shoot him, shoot him, shoot him, shoot him. Because <laughs> Grillo is standing there at Sky and he's like, kill him, Sky. Shoot him, shoot him, shoot him, shoot him, shoot him, shoot him. <laughs> and, and he goes like, come on, come on, you fucking pussy, kill him. Oh. And she shoots Grillo in the head. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because this kind of led up to him saying, hey, you're a little different on this yeah. one. Like, uh, maybe you got some feelings in here. You know, yeah, because Sky at one point, I think she does say that she loves him 
Yeah. Who loves Chris. Yeah. So she kills Frank Grillo and Chris has like a uh, climbing pick, like one of those like ice picks on the act, like you climb ice or something with. Mm-hmm. And he stabs Sky and gets away. He like runs. Yeah, he's like, thanks for not killing me, but I'm still going to attack you. Yeah, it's like, you really shouldn't have killed Frank Grillo because, dude, I don't think I could have ever taken that guy down. Mm -mm. But thanks for shooting and killing him. Yeah, thanks. (laughs) So this is where he pulls a sky and starts doing the same thing to her. He, like, turns on the fireplace. He, like, turns on lights, off and on. Turns, door like, doors and stuff. He's doing the same thing. Uses all of his technology. There's, like, some infrared shit that he was doing. Yeah. Stuff that I... I was like, I don't understand, but it seems to work. I know. It, it's very strange. And she's walking around the house and she has the worst line. One of the worst lines in the movie. She goes, Chris, it's time to kiss and make up. Mm. <laughs> and I, I wrote in my notes here. I was like, you know, if he was a huge security expert, you think he would have some sort of a weapon around the house, like a gun or like a hidden shotgun yeah. or something. Instead, he's just like, no, I'm going to make sure that the security app that I have is the only thing that I have to protect myself with. Or a safe room or... Yeah, something like that. Or something. And at this point, when Sky is walking through the house, she takes her heels off. I'm like, you think she would have already done that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, taking the hair down was more important. Yes. Gotta look good for this. Um... Sky is walking, and Chris comes through and tackles her on the ground. She gets the upper hand on him. She stabs him with the pick. Mm-hmm. And then the ex-wife comes in and, and fights her, and Sky stabs the ex-wife in the leg, and they're both on the ground. You know, they've knocked the gun that Sky had out of her hand, but Sky has the axe and is like, has both of them, like she's yeah, going to kill him. like, I'm going to cut you up. Yeah, she like raises the pickaxe to kill them, and you hear a gunshot, and it's the daughter. Mm-hmm. And she has shot Sky, and she's holding that gun like a boss. <laughs> yeah, I know. She's like, yeah, I just did that. Yeah, she kills her, and Sky like falls to the ground. Police are finally showing up here. It looks like you hear like sirens and lights. Chris and the ex-wife are sitting there, and I think the ex-wife gets up to go to the daughter and like hugs her. And Sky looks at him, and she's on the ground dying. She goes, "Margaret, my name is Margaret." And then she dies, and as she dies, you see, like, a little tear go down her face, and then it just cuts. That's it. That's the end of it. Poor Margaret. (laughs) Are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. R.I.P. Margaret. (laughs) Yeah. And I think some people might be upset. I I was thinking about this. Like, they might be upset that we don't get, like, a resolution. Like, does he get his money back? But I would assume he does. Yeah. I think, you know, he gets his non- Number non real number of money back. <laughs> uh, I had six thousand three hundred seventy seven and ten in <laughs> like ten dollars. No, six thousand three seventy nine <laughs> one zero. But where's the rest? I need another number. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's the end of the movie. I thought it was okay. Worst of the worst of this e- last year, maybe, I guess. Mm. I thought it was okay. It was watchable, but it was also just also a little cringy at times. Yes. Especially her acting, Sky's acting. Yeah, she is definitely the worst part of this movie. And she is basically the lead. Like, she is the, the thing that drives yeah. the movie forward. And I hate to say, like, it's, oh, she's a bad actress. Maybe it was just how she was directed or something maybe she is a good actress it just this wasn't the right movie for her i don't think so yeah i mean i had never heard of this movie before i didn't really think it was that great i mean it had some good like an interesting twist you're like oh well that that was like you said the best part was pretty much when that guy shows up frank grillo Mm -hmm. but it really falls apart because of sky yeah unfortunately what are we gonna do next so we're gonna be doing a all right, from what I see is a horror movie horror. with Kevin Bacon called They Them. Oh. I don't know anything about it. I have heard the name and I have heard people say that it is not good, 
but it is like a horror movie. I don't know if it's like a transgender horror is movie. Is it a non-binary? I don't know. <laughs> Not making fun of non-binary. No, it's that's like that's the, pronouns. That's yeah. their pronouns. So interesting. So we'll see. I heard, hopefully this isn't like a bad movie where it's like making fun of. But oh. I heard it was a, a horror movie with Kevin Bacon in it. That is not a good movie. If it makes uh, fun of it, you know. We you, can't do it. <laughs> then I'm going to flip my lid. I know. this may For people that are that are really angry with the woke culture, um, if this turns out to be a movie that makes fun of transgendered people or non-binary people. Um, We're going to flip it off and piss on it. Maybe we'll do another movie. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. But uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> But again, hey, if you are looking for a great gift for your loved one, like if their birthday's coming up, or if you're getting married and you're like, man, I need, really want a great gift for the bridesmaids, check out my Etsy shop. I know I just have a couple of things. Um, there are some keychains, really cute keychains. I hope to have some videos to kind of go in more depth of, um, there's one keychain that you can do like so many different things with. But check it out. Follow Moon Knight Crafts on Facebook. Twitter, pretty much any social media. We'll have all the links in the description where you can follow it. If you go to the Etsy shop, just like the store so you can get all the updates that I'm doing because I will be adding so much more and so much cute stuff. And if you want something custom, I can work with you on that. If you want some cute wall hanging and you got some different ideas, I work with you. We'll make something pretty freaking fantastic. Yeah. And thanks for listening <laughs> to our podcast. Yes, we thank you so much. You can follow our podcast on all the social media. And uh, if you have any questions, concerns, you want to reach out to us, you can email us at thefilmobsessedcouple at gmail.com. If you make any comments on all of our any of our social media, we will shout you out on our next episode. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I did just read the plot synopsis for They Them. We may be in trouble. God damn it. <laughs> but thank you guys so much. Thank you for listening, and, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.